morning I am in Pratt, Kansas, and I uh, spent the night here at a Casey's General Store truck stop. They have showers, so that was kind of nice. Definitely beat sleeping on the, uh, the on-ramp of the, uh, the Kentucky Welcome Center, but I'm waiting here this morning to meet up with Dick Gehring, and we're going to head out to, I think it's Big Basin or Wild Basin Preserve out here in Kansas and we're gonna film a little bit out there and then um, I will continue west uh, to Colorado of course we're not filming in Colorado it's more or less we're gonna be passing through on our way north to Montana and then uh, into Canada so lots of great stuff coming up here but um, this should be interesting. Dick uh, has a has a lease on the state park to graze bison, um, so it's you know it's important to have these animals in the ecosystem to help support the the ecosystem. So you kind of get a double benefit there. You get uh, you get meat production and uh, conservation out of these lease agreements, and you know it's reminds us that they're they're kind of important anyway glad to have you guys come along again Take a quick stop at the historic foam barn, which is a round barn. It was built around 1912 out here in Kansas, and it's kind of a—it's an arch architectural treasure. The way this thing is built, I'm excited to see it. Um, they had stalls for about 16 draft horses in there, and uh, I believe at one point in time she had one stallion. So um, they came over from. France, maybe? Foam? Fome? Fome. And um, it's just, you know, some of the architecture and ingenuity <laughs> that you find in agriculture is pretty amazing. I mean, it's how our country was built. So uh, I'm excited to see this barn and then we'll head on to the basin and film some bison.
I'm Dick Gehring with Black Kettle Buffalo. We're out of Mound Ridge, Kansas. Um, started dealing with buffalo back in, in 1980. Um, purchased a meat locker in 83 and, and we started using uh, bison as a calling card, a protein that not everybody else had. And that's kind of what got us started and, and it went from there. You know, this, this place behind me that we're at, this is called uh, the Big Basin Prairie Preserve. Uh, we're out near Ashland, Kansas. And this is, a, this is a great collaboratory work, I think, between production and wildlife and parks. Kansas Wildlife and Parks owns this property. And it was gifted to them years ago with a caveat that only indigenous species be be present and be on the property. And so that's, that's kind of in a, <laughs> in a very short portion of a very long story is, is why we're here. One of the greatest things about this, this place is our ability to leave anim these animals out here um, on their own. They have everything they need. They've got the biodiversity of, of the different grasses and forbs and sedges and the mineral content in the ground. Um, buffalo grass in the in the breeding season that's still holding a higher protein content where they're they're the cows are gaining weight as they're moving into into the breeding season and the milking ability for those cows to raise these calves is just phenomenal and we get to do that we get to allow enough acreage for these animals to survive out here and to thrive out here on their own they they get to do it. Um, we, the, the best thing we get to do is get out of the way. They they handle it. They take care of themselves. We take care of the ground, so the ground takes care of them. They take care of us, and it's a it's a great it's a great place to raise these animals. Um, this this area has so much history in it. Um, there's been. <laughs> For, for thousands of years, for hundreds of years before, you know, we were we were around here. The buffalo were here and the native communities were here. And the the interaction that, that went on for lifetimes um, is, I, I mean, it, you could talk for hours about that kind of thing. And we get to be a part of that by allowing something um, to be as close to, to history as, as what it was, we just have to be smart enough to get out of the way and, and let it unfold. We're involved in a number of different research projects that, uh, that are based around bison themselves and not, not based off of something else. We're, we're doing some uh, parasite studies here and we're also doing some mycoplast studies here. And, and this herd, this group, is when we when we round up in the it's not really a roundup it's a gathering but when we when we gather these animals in the fall and run them through the squeeze chute we're taking samples and sending them in and trying to 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 find um, what all is involved in these disease processes and and how are they interacting with the animal and how the animal is is adapting to that and it's it's a pretty in depth. Uh, research on the on the mycoplasma, I think it's going to get a lot deeper. Um, that's beginning to be a, a real, or it has been a real challenge for for many other producers. And when it hits you, it's uh, you know it's kind of daunting. So those kind of things are really important, and we feel really honored and blessed to to, to be able to do that here, and and just to be a part of that bigger picture. One of the attractions to this site is is St. Jacob's Well, and it's it's not really a well; it's a pond um, that is spring-fed. Uh, it's never run dry. The the native communities that frequented this place called it the Living Waters because it it never went dry. There's a monument up on on one of the high hills, really close to to the Little Basin, which is just east east of here. We're kind of in the bottom of the Big Basin, uh, where we're setting. Um, but that mon there's, a, like I say, a monument up there that's marking the area for, 
for travelers to see for miles around uh, so they knew where where to go to get water. Um, we've, we've got a photograph of a cattle drive back in the, I'm sure, late 1800s, um, early 1900s, some, somewhere in there. And, and it's a just open range. There's, there's, you know, I don't know how many cattle were in that. The remuda, the horse remuda they had was, was quite large. So I'm, I'm assuming there was probably a pretty good jag of, of cattle that they were, they were bringing through. If, uh, if this place could talk, the history that it would have would, would probably be really, really interesting. Um, who knows what's at the bottom of that pond? <laughs> I. I'm not sure I want to know, but um, there's there's all kinds of accounts of of traffic through here. There's a book out called In Dull Knife's Wake, and it was uh, it was put together in, in reference to Dull Knife's tribe that was down in, in Oklahoma that didn't want to be there anymore, and they decided it was time to go back to Pine Ridge to go to back to their home. And they came right through here, and there's there's all kind of accounts in there, both from the local historians to the newspapers to the military officer reports as they were trying to to recapture them, and they weren't very successful. Um, they a good part of Dull Knife's group made it back to Pine Ridge. Um, just there's there's lots and lots of history here. The the biodiversity and the the um, the wildlife out here is completely different. Um, we don't live here. We're, we live a little ways east, and you know, the, there's all kinds of stuff here, horny toads and lizards and birds of prey that don't look like the ones at home. They've seen porcupine out here, and of course, deer and coyote and, and whatnot. Um, that's, you, you, you take any time and sit here and watch and, and watch the interaction between the wildlife and the bison that, that live here, it's, it's quite something to see.